There's a new update for Luminar Neo, version 1.24. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, I'll show you what's new and what's improved in Luminar Neo. So if you're ready, let's dive in to update 1.24. The first new addition in this update is to the develop tool. When you open develop now, you'll see a new button at the very top called auto adjust. When you click it, according to the description in the manual, it's designed to automatically optimize your image by adjusting some key settings specifically related to exposure and light balance. I tried it on a few different images and I found that it always moved the same sliders. Let's take a look at what it does on this image. It increased the exposure slider to brighten the image. That's a good thing because it was a little dark. Lowered the highlight slider. That's probably to keep detail in the water. Lowered the shadows a little bit. And you can also see that it brightened the image by increasing the whites down here on the curves tool. If we look at the before and after, you can see that it has brightened up the image quite significantly. If we turn on the clipping warnings, you can see that the whites are nice and bright without going off the edge of the graph. So overall, this one button has done a really nice job. Let's see how it performs on a few different images. This image has good exposure already, so let's see what auto adjust does here. Interesting. It pushed the exposure up a little bit and brought the highlights back down. Let's use the J key to double check. There is still some clipping in these areas here. So I would go farther with this tool, but I would also add some blacks because it's lost all contrast. For this one, I would say the auto adjust didn't do as good a job as expected. Let's try another image that's a bit flat. This one here of a landscape, the light is very even. Sky is a little bit bright in this area here. So let's see what auto adjust does to this one. You can see that indeed it has pulled down the highlights almost all the way to compensate for that bright area in the sky. The problem with doing it this way is that it's a global edit, meaning it applies to the entire image. What I would do for this image is only bring the highlights down a little bit and I would actually boost the whites like they did here, and then add some black because it's very flat. Then I might increase the exposure a little bit and then the highlights back down again. So it's kind of this little dance. Then I would apply something else, perhaps Enhance AI or Sky Enhancer, which in fact does a really nice job on the sky and it also solves the problem of clipping in the bright areas. Notice how much more contrast the image has now. So auto adjust on this one was a no. This image of the boat has a lot of contrast. There's some dark areas and some light areas, but nothing is clipping except this little house in the background. When we use auto adjust, once again, it's pulled down the highlights, brought the exposure down a tiny bit and punched up the whites. So it seems to be using those three sliders the most. Once again, I would add some blacks back in because it's lacking contrast. And then I would do a local adjustment to deal with the clipping of this house. And of course, I would remove the dust spots and straighten the image. So auto adjust on this one was a good starting point with a couple of tweaks. This image of my cat is a pretty good exposure. You can see there's a little bit of clipping here in the brightest areas of her white fur. Let's see what auto adjust does. It definitely darkened the image. You can see that it's pulled the highlights and the shadows down, but instead of doing that, I might've actually decreased the exposure overall. Once again, it was a good starting point with a minor adjustment. So I suggest trying the new auto adjust option in the develop tool and make your decisions based on individual images, then adjust and tweak as necessary. I've already applied auto adjust on this image. When we compare it to the original, you can see that it's done a nice job reducing the contrast and bringing the highlights under control. 
one thing to note about this tool is that once you've pressed the button, there's no undo. Likewise, there's no eyeball for before and after. You have to use the main before and after on the entire image. I tried clicking the button again to see if it would reset. And as you can see, it did nothing. If you want to see the before and after, just make a tweak to any of the sliders. Then you'll see the eyeball and the reset buttons appear. The next tool that's had a bit of an update is Atmosphere AI. You'll find it in the landscape section of tools. When we add fog, it now is a smarter version of the tool. We're told that the update for this tool includes better depth mapping, meaning when we drag the amount up and play with the depth sliders to move the fog forward and backward in the scene, it does so with better depth mapping, meaning going around objects. Let me turn the thumbnails off and let's take a closer look. As you can see here, when I shift the depth from further away to closer to the camera, it starts to come around him slowly until it's all encompassing. Likewise with the other options. You could see here how it's coming up to the shoreline and then spilling over as I continue. I tried this one on a few different images that had subjects and backgrounds that were quite well defined, like this one here. You could see that as I drag it up, it slowly creeps around him. Let's look at another example. For this image of Old Havana, I wanted to add what looked like smog in the background. You'll notice we can isolate the man on the bicycle and have the fog completely behind him. And then as I slowly increase the depth slider, you can see it come over the back seat and him a little bit, more so over him. Now the front wheel of the bicycle is out of the fog and he is in the fog. So I think it's doing quite a nice job of depth mapping here. Likewise on this image, also Havana. Increase the amount. The default, you can see the fog sort of runs in the middle of the image. As I increase the depth, the motorcycles get covered with fog and eventually completely encompassed. Taking it the other way, now the fog is behind the yellow Jeep. So it's doing a really nice job of figuring out objects in the scene and when to go around them. This is not a tool that I use a whole lot, but I think with this enhancement, I may consider it more often. The next update does not involve any of the tools, but rather the export options. When you click export, you now have an expanded pull down menu with more options. One that I find extremely handy is export with previous. So if you've done an export recently and you want to use the same settings, you just click that and it will automatically export it with the same settings to the same location. Likewise, if you know you want a JPEG of full quality or lower quality, there's two options here to choose from, as well as two TIFF options. If we click the JPEG option, it does pop up asking you where to save it first. So unlike the previous choice, it doesn't automatically choose the location. You get to identify where to save your exports. New export at the top will bring up the familiar dialog box, allowing you to choose your settings as per usual. One other important addition to note while we're on this page is that if you want to export your file as a DNG, you now have that option. This is something else that a lot of Luminar Neo users have been asking for. So if you're included in that bunch, now you have that option. The last update is something that people have been waiting for a long time. That is catalog optimization and cache cleaning. This will help solve the problem of an overly large and bloated catalog size. If we take a look at this catalog that I'm currently using, this is the one that I created for my Luminar Neo course. Just a quick side note to tell you a little bit more about my Luminar Neo course. It's been completely redone for 2025 with all new lessons, including all of the new tools that have been added. 
you get my raw files to practice with and follow along the lessons as well as several bonus items. There's a link to our Luminar Neo course in the description area below if you want to get more information. You can see that I only have 551 images in the catalog total. However, the size of the catalog is 34.86 gigabytes. That's really large considering the number of images. So let's find this new setting and see how this affects the catalog size. To find this new option, go to the Luminar Neo menu and settings. If you're on Windows, that's going to be under the menu below the logo. Once the preference dialog box is opened, you'll see that the new option right at the top here says clear cache. So when I click it, we get a warning, first of all, it's telling us that opening already edited photos will take more time. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I do. So let's click it and see how long it takes. Well, that was pretty instant. Now you can see that the catalog cache is zero gigabytes according to Luminar. Let's take a look and see how big it is on the actual hard drive now. 4.92 gigs. So it is significantly smaller. But let's take a look and see if the warning comes into play. Let's open this image and see if it takes longer to draw. It definitely did. And you can see the number of tools that I applied is not too extensive. Let's take a look at another image where I've done a lot more editing. This one has layers and a sky replacement. But it loaded actually pretty quickly. How about this one? It did take a few seconds to load and sharpen the image, but it wasn't really that bad. Another one that took about five seconds to load. I've tried a few different images that I've done a lot of editing to, to see if it took any longer for them to load. So while it does take a bit longer, for me, overall, I would rather have a smaller catalog and wait a couple of seconds than have a bloated catalog file. So in regards to this new option, I would recommend that if you have a really large catalog and you're running out of space on your hard drive, that you do go ahead and clear the catalog cache. Then set the maximum size here a little bit smaller and likewise on this one. If you find that your edits are slowing down too much, you'll know for next time. Don't delete the cache and increase these sliders a bit. As long as you have a system that can handle the amount of memory and space that Luminar needs, I would leave the settings at the default. But if you have space issues and need to clear it out, empty the cache. If you enjoyed this video and would like more tutorials on Luminar Neo, check out one on the screen now. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit notifications so you don't miss any new videos that I post. Take care until next time.